Good morning, my creative friends. Dr. Manette Riordan here. I had a false start, so if it took a minute to find the video, my apologies. I have one that I started. Ignore it. I'm going to go delete it. You'll never even know it's there, but I'm, my throat is a little froggy this morning with some allergies for sure. Well, so welcome to September's theme of drawing botanicals. We're going to draw, paint, collage, botanicals all month long. I have a phone that is just brimming and overflowing with flower photos and I have been wanting to do some kind of project with them, practice drawing them. So see, this seemed like a really good month to do that. I even have my little sunflower earrings on today because it's the end of summer here. The sunflowers are still beautiful. There's wildflowers lingering and people's gardens are pretty, but there's that uh, fall coolness in the air and I don't know how much all these wildflowers longer that wildflowers are going to last. So I've been taking lots and lots of photos and um, decided it would be fun to work on drawing. So what I learned from last month's practice was the benefit of drawing before painting. And you know I knew that logically ahead of time but something changed in my commitment to getting better at drawing with the practice of drawing faces in August. So I want to do the same thing in the month of September and I'm going to play, explore, see where I get to. I don't quite know what's going to happen but I do know that um, we're going to draw a lot of flowers and we're going to paint some flowers and probably going to collage some flowers as well. So welcome, glad you're here, super excited about this month. I'm going to go ahead and change my camera here. So I have this brand new journal, good morning, that my daughter brought me when she came home and look at this cute little mermaid bookmark there. And this is got pretty nice paper so this is um, a really good sketch pad I think it'll be perfect for drawing and it even lays open pretty flat which I'm happy about and I always love working in squares as well I also printed out a couple of pages of photos these are just photos that I took over the last two days and yet and there's two copies of them for uh, for a reason so I've got a few flower photos to play with here and I've also got some tracing paper because what I want to work on today to get me started with this process and practice of drawing flowers is to make sure I'm actually seeing the shape. You know, when I think about like I want to draw like a kid, I draw a circle in the middle and I draw the petals, but when it comes to capturing perspective, like this Cosmo here, let me zoom in a little bit on these flowers. Make sure to see if we can get that a little more focused, bear with me. Sometimes if I get some text down there, it gives it something to focus on a little bit better. Okay. Hmm, it's giving me grief with the focus today. And of course Brad's gone to the gym. He's the master with the with the camera. There we go. It just needed to be further away there. Back to school in a good way, a hundred percent. Yes, everything is a funny, funny glitch, isn't it, Blanca? I have to take all these things with a with a sense of humor. But this Cosmo which is growing wild along the irrigation ditch <clears throat> excuse me and um it's hard to tell but it's kind of you know it's curved right like it's the the leaves aren't flat open unlike these beautiful little asters i saw by the river yesterday that are blooming and these hibiscus were actually sort of hanging sidewards like this right and I'm not even sure what this one is, but it's again just growing wild. It looked like somebody maybe scattered some some seeds or something is or the birds scatter them. It's rare to see cosmos or these down by our irrigation ditch. <clears throat> and then I'm super excited about playing with these sunflowers. I absolutely love sunflowers. And I love they're not perfectly symmetrical. A lot of times when we're starting to draw and we might look at this sunflower and we want to make all the petals perfectly sym symmetrical, well they're not. And then this was one I took where there were a three of them kind of bunched together and they're great examples of perspective 
because they're all kind of pointing different directions. We even have one, um, the end of one sort of pointing off into the side. There's still a lot of really beautiful sunflowers. And then a different variety of aster, a white aster with those gorgeous little stamen right in the center. But you know, look how the, the petals are kind of clustered. So I want to kind of just play with shape today to, to practice, you know, what it is that we're seeing. And I wanted to start with, let's see, piano work, kind of just going over this with some black lines and looking at the shapes because it'll help me build some muscle memory. So we have this nice triangle shape. And my eye can play tricks on me, right? My eye can play tricks on me when I think I'm seeing one thing. And so I want to just kind of really be able to see what the shape of those flowers are. And then if I were to come in, this isn't round, right? It's an oval. So just noticing the, the shapes. But then if I come in around this one, which is hanging in a slightly different direction, it's a little more round and everything's at a little bit different of an angle. So some type of hibiscus. We have different hibiscus here, not the classic ones. So we can start to see the shape of these. Good morning, Leslie. Welcome, welcome. So if I were to come in and start to sketch these in my sketchbook, I would start with the shape of the whole flower, just like what we did with faces where we started to really sort of block things out and, you know, to um, really see the shape. I could do the same thing with these flowers and I could come in here with that oval shape and then I could come in here with this round shape and it's going to help me cluster those flowers, place them together a little bit differently. And I can also look at this and see that these really are divided in half. So if I come in here and I divide this one in half and I kind of divide this one in half this way, this tells me where the center of the flower is going to go. And we're going to see if this is going to work. This is new practice to me. It may, may or may not be new to you, but it is definitely a new practice to me. And now I'm just going to go in and start to kind of get some of those petal shapes. Again, paying attention to where those petal starts in relationship to my lines. Not quite touching the circle there. And that I'm noticing that, you know, the line of this one is almost the tip of this one over here. So that gives me sort of something to shoot for over here. And I think the color of these are so spectacular, especially with that dark magenta in the centers. And there we have our very simple flower. It doesn't look very dramatic until we start to bring in some of the, you know, the color and the shading you know, knowing that this is white, the sun was, you know, right smack on them. And the other thing I noticed, I took a bunch of leaf pictures yesterday. We went to one of our favorite spots on the river. And one of the things I noticed was how much texture things have that we don't always notice the um, from that perspective of the, the veins of the flowers, right? There's so many lines in these, these, you know, these cosmos were, are beautiful. And the same thing here, that they have a lot, there's a lot going on in those little petals that we don't notice unless we get up close and personal with things. So these, you can really see that scoop there in the center. So this one feels a little trickier. 
because it's foreshortening, right? So it's foreshortening. We're looking at the edge of that flower is closer to us and it's moving away from us at the center there. And again, just noticing where these lines come from. And I'm also noticing that this is actually taller than I probably gave it credit for there. Thank goodness for erasers. So this one already feels a little trickier to draw. So I just have to slow down, take my time. Just like with Zentangle, remember to breathe. And we kind of get that shape going and then we're gonna bring in and just with that pencil sketch, add a little darkening here. And sometimes when we draw them, they look kind of funny because we think, oh, that perspective is kind of kind of weird there. But you have to trust the flower, trust your eyes. But there we have some simple hibiscus flowers that we're just starting to get the look and feel of them. And I'm thinking, uh, again, it would be fun to come in and just add a little bit of um, watercolor to these and just to get some of that sense of that color and that shading. I'm also noticing that this probably actually comes down more like that. But again, just the practice, like this is just teaching me to see because what we see with our naked eye and, and then what we actually draw is not always the same. And I'm probably gonna try some blind contour drawings with these flowers I think would be really fun as well. So I'm going to do the same thing with the Cosmo here. And the first thing I notice is that circle in the center is pretty round, right? It's not an oval, it's pretty round. I'm looking at the flower straight on. <clears throat> I've got these beautiful shapes of these petals. <clears throat> Excuse me. But these petals here are much shorter than the other petals. And if I go around the outside of the whole thing, notice that angle here. So we've got an oval again. but that oval's angled in a different direction. And if I were to <clears throat> use my pen to measure, I can see, the pencil's probably easier to see, I can see that the difference in the lengths of the petals. And I don't know what they teach in drawing school, but you know, this is like how I'm personally figuring it out. This is my way of practicing. So again, I want to come in here and just kind of get that oval shape down. I'm being very sketchy. I'm also noticing that <clears throat> my halfway mark is about here and here. So my, my center, my flower, <clears throat> is not directly in the center of my oval. It's actually a little bit off center. So if I come in here, and my oval's a slightly different shape here, then I wanna use that as my guide and see that the center of my flower is off centered a little bit there like that. And then I can also see where my petals are and I can start to bring in where those petals are lying along the edges. To me, this is a, an easier shape to draw than the hibiscus one, but my eye plays tricks because I wanna make everything symmetrical. And when you look at flowers, even though you might think they're perfect, they're 
not. And I'm drawing the ones that <clears throat> are on my cross lines because I think it will be easier to fill them in between than to try to just draw them all at the same time. Then I'll really start to get the, the shape of them a little bit better. So this needs to come way in that way to get that really foreshortened petal there. And this petal notice is laying over, right? You can see if we were to shade that in there that we've got some layered petals happening. So we want to make sure we get that beautiful layered look happening. And I'm getting maybe some bigger gaps in there than I wanted, but that's okay. And this one's kind of tucked behind that one there. And this one also kind of curves down this way. And then we have this beautiful yellow center. And this was, I'd never seen a variegated Cosmo like this. It had the most beautiful, just again, those edges of magenta with that pink. But we've got a little bit of shading along the edges of the petals. They're lightest at the top where the sun is almost kind of peeking through. But they also had these just a lot of texture in the leaves that you don't notice unless you get up close to them. And because this was sort of scooped up this way with just a little bit of shading, we can hopefully give it just a little bit of drama and contrast there along those bottom edges. Not perfect, but not a bad first effort, right? So for me, it's like the more that I do this, the more that I can start to see where it is that I'm going. I love these little asters. They bloom everywhere here. And they're actually mostly round. So if I were to go in, although that one's kind of short on the bottom, but still pretty round, I just noticed the centers maybe are in some different places. These that are in the background are going to be much more oval shaped. So just noticing the shape of them can really help us just get some of that detail down. What I love about these asters is the just sort of you know, they have a lot of those little sort of almost spindly leaves. Like the dandelions, they're one of the, the first things to bloom, but they also bloom the longest. And so if we came in here with our marks, so this one's really right down the, the center of the flower there. So I kind of took that picture just head on. So notice when you take pictures, the angles of things, I often try to, and this one has a really tiny center. Um, I often try to get up really close so that I can really see the, the details. And then I'm noticing that there's spaces between and they kind of grow in these fun little clusters. And I'm also noticing like that some of them are flat up against the edge of the, the center. Some of them are a little more pointy, but the edges of the petals are a little more squared. And then again, we have some of that space. We have some that are shorter, some that are longer. We kind of have a, a bigger bunch here at the bottom. Again, they're this sort of delightful shade of purple. That one has that one really long petal there. So we can just really start to play with shape and just see what it is they look like. Now, one of the things I was interested in was finding some of the different shapes that I love to maybe create some floral coloring pages, right? I would want more 
if I were going to sort of turn these into a black and white illustration, I would want more symmetry in the design, right? I would want to come in and add more of these petals, even if they were some, you know, different heights and there was still space. There's something in my eye that really loves the, the symmetry of the design. Um, so these were hibiscus. Oops, get that little mermaid out of there. Uh, this was a Cosmo, and this is an Aster. And these are all things, again, that I'm just seeing on my morning walks around the area. So I really love this orange one. I don't know what it is. But I discovered this new thing on my iPhone. Maybe other people know about it, but I didn't know about it. That on your phone, if you just, um, this is an iPhone, not an Android. If I just pull up, I can look up the plant. Huh, so it says this is a sulfur Cosmo. So it's also a type of Cosmo, which is fascinating. I wouldn't necessarily have expected that, but that looks like the exact same flower. So this has been really fun to be able to quickly identify plants without having to get an extra app. <clears throat> and my mom's texting me. So let's look at this. <clears throat> Interestingly, so these Cosmos were all kind of scooped and had more dimension to them. These were open quite flat. So what I notice here is that the center of the flower sticks out so much that look at this, it casts this gorgeous shadow on the edge of the center of that flower. And so again, I'm noticing that each of the petals has three little dips. And this one actually had this edges of the leaf actually even match almost the, the sides of the, the petals there. So if I were painting this or sketching this, I would want to make sure that I sketched in the center of that flower. And I could draw these straight from my phone as well. A lot of the flowers are pretty bug eaten at this time of the season and we have um, a huge infestation of grasshoppers this year. And um, I could draw these from my phone as well, but I really wanted to be able to see these outlines. So I won't always print them, but it felt like a great way to start and to be able to see the shape. So again, I wanna go around the edges of those petals and it's pretty round, right? It's um, close to a circle. It's a little bit of a funky, funky circle. So let's see. We can just kind of get the circle going. And then, you know, if I were going to paint these or add color to them or finalize the sketches, I would go back and remove these circles. And let's see, I'm going to have the divide in half lines go kind of at an angle because it is a little bit funky. This helps me see the shapes of the petals, right? The, we've got some shorty ones behind and the bigger ones in front. And so that I'm just going to repeat those lines over here. I was also looking around on uh, my Kindle last night. If you have Kindle Unlimited, there were a couple of nice books for drawing botanicals. Okay, this is not exactly in the center. It's a little higher up there. I think I kind of got it in the center. So this is kind of that shadow of the center, and this center has a lot of texture. I'm going to just get a little bit of that 
texture in there. And then I'm going to start with this great big petal. Here's my line. So the first tip is over here. And it's going to come almost halfway to that next one. So again, I'm just using these lines to guide me. And if you don't have access to a printer and to print your own flower photos or just some photos off the internet, um, go to a used bookstore or if you're a library person, go to your library and look for some like flower reference guides for like what maybe what grows in your area. So I love that these are all flowers that are growing right here in my neighborhood, but you can definitely find reference guides. And I'm going to show you what I would do if I were working from a book and not a... Okay, so this is where this circle is actually shorter. This petal feels a little bit shorter there behind the... If I were working from a book and not a printed photo. This one's a little hard to tell which one is kind of tucked behind, so we're going to go this way and I notice it's kind of tucked behind there. And these again, you can see the striations in the flowers in the variations of color. Uh, this one would be a really fun one to do with colored pencil because of the subtleties of the oranges with some little bits of yellow and red in there would make for some really lovely highlight work in there. I'm thinking this guy is actually more round. All right, not too bad. Again, these are very first efforts at drawing. Are you guys drawing along with me and practicing along with me? So hopefully you guys are seeing how I'm doing this and, and getting some uh, good drawing practice in as well. Or what is everybody else working on this morning? Anybody do anything fun for the weekend? So we drove up over the top of Trail Ridge Road, which is the, used to be one of the highest highways. It's still very high. It's up almost at 12,000 feet over the, the top of Rocky Mountain National Park and then down the, the other side to a beautiful little lake village. And so we had a lovely drive on Saturday. And then I had a painting play date with one of my girlfriends on Sunday. And then we had a picnic yesterday. It was a fun weekend and it was lovely to just actually have quite a bit of time off. And I like that you can see the kind of stem here, you know, sort of helps to just place the, the flower a little bit. Maybe not have it be just quite so hanging so much. And again, I'm trying to use some combination of kind of measurements and my eyes to see what it is that the, the flowers are doing and what the, the different shape of the, the flowers are. You can let me know if this is helpful or not. It's fun for me. I don't know if it's fun to watch, but it's certainly fun for me. Here is another type of aster. Um, it has a little bit different leaf than the other one, but it's definitely in that same family. I really love um, the little center here. And again, I took this one, I was actually holding this one and took it head on from the top looking down. So again, we have that mostly round shape, but look how sketchy the petals are. It's like when we think about you know, looking at a flower, we think about something more full, like the sunflower. Thank you, Blanca. And did you get to see your family this weekend? 
And then when we see this whole cluster of asters, right, we can see it looks like they look beautiful when they're all clustered together, but when you look at one up close, they look like they're missing petals, but they're not. It's how they grow. So just being, you know, mindful, mindful of that. So I'm going to draw this other aster here. And this was also a type of Cosmo. Now I've already forgotten what the type of Cosmo was. And I like the ones where, you know, we can kind of give ourselves these guidelines that helps us with either the symmetry or the asymmetry. The symmetry or the asymmetry. So is it even all the way around or is it not? And this one is amazing because the, the petals are kind of all over the place, but you notice there they, some of them are singular and some of them are sort of clustered. And this one has a slightly different shape, a little more rounded, although there's some variation too. And these are come in and there's more space between them. They're a little more pointy in the center than the purple asters were. These are a little bit bigger. And they have some little teeny tiny leaves kind of peeking through here. That one looks quite a bit bigger. And tomorrow I am live in the evening instead of the morning at 5 p.m. Mountain Time. And I will be playing with sunflowers tomorrow live. I want to bring some paint into the sunflowers and just have some fun creating some of the, the texture, maybe even making some abstract sunflowers I love or some folk art style flowers. And so this one, you know, it always looks so funny when you see all those sort of sketchy bits around there, but it's what the aster looks like. It's not what my eye wants to see, but it is exactly what that flower looks like. And this one has almost a, a ferny kind of leaf to it. It has these sort of, you know, long, skinny, narrow leaves. So we can add just a little bit of those kind of off in the background a little bit. And I like to keep things very loose and thank you, thank you, the Minette method. Thank you. Thanks, guys. <clears throat> when I'm drawing practice like this, I'm not trying to get these perfect. I'm just simply trying to start to capture the shape so that if I were going to create a painting or a cluster of these, I would know exactly where I was going with them. All right, so let's play with some sunflowers for a minute. And come back in and we'll work on this side of the journal. So this one looks almost perfect, doesn't it? It's just quite, quite beautiful. I could probably even, let's see, I have, I have my handy dandy circle drawer. I use this tool all the time. And if I were to come in and put this over the top of the sunflower, look at that. Absolutely, that center is perfect. But what about the outside? If I were to use this to draw the outside of the circle, it's pretty close. So let's draw one that's a little smaller than our petals. And I also, so I love this tool. I think I bought it, you know, decade ago or more at an office supply store. And I love all the marks on it. So I'm going to go ahead. It's got cross hatches on there. So I know where the center lines are. And then I can come back and I can line up those center lines. So I'm getting this circle in the in the same place. 
So I'm just curious. So there's those. Yep. lines on here. I probably should use a thicker black pen. So it's pretty darn round. I mean I think this is one of the reasons that we're so drawn to sunflowers is the the magical symmetry of them. They're they're quite quite beautiful flowers. I absolutely love them. But this one, let's see, these were growing this way and the grasshoppers love the centers of these and I also loved the way these were clustered together. It's a great example of how flowers draw. Let me see if I can find something. Here's a nice big Sharpie. Let's see. So if I look at this one, I've got this lovely half circle. And then we have leaves growing out of it because it's already lost its petals. We've still got maybe a few petals, but we can really start to see the, the shape of that. And if I come down here, because these are all going at different angles, all of a sudden notice because of the just the angle of which I took the picture, perfectly round, head on, but here the perspective is different. And these ovals are all going just slightly different directions. And then this one's actually a little more on the round side up there. We've had the most, uh, more grasshoppers than I've ever seen in my life, but they've been beautiful colors. And then again, I'm noticing, notice the shortness of the petals on the bottom here. Because that flower is tilted away from me. I can really see the variations in petals. They're not all perfectly round and symmetrical. I can see the shadow they're casting here. The sun was bright, bright, bright yesterday morning when I got out for my walk. Well, it is a lot of mornings here, which I love. And notice the length of some of these petals, the shortness of these petals. And the same thing here, the ones that are further away from me and pointed away are shorter and these are taller, longer, I guess, not taller, longer. They look longer. And you can see we can have a lot of fun with the petals of the sunflower. They definitely vary in shape a lot and they vary in color. But I love the way these are stacked together. We've even got our nice, looks like a bit of a dog-eared leaf there. Something's been eating it, but we have some leaves here in the background as well that we're starting to see an actually interesting composition here. And it's so funny because we look at these flowers and we think, oh my gosh, they're beautiful, they're perfect, and they're, they're not, right? They're actually, there's a lot going on, there's a lot of movement, a lot of different direction, unlike our beautiful sunflower over here that is very symmetrical in nature, right? So they're completely different. This one is harder to draw right than this one. This one's pretty easy to draw and this is like where we can come in and draw like a kindergartner, right? We can come in and just imagine the layering of those petals. I love the way they sort of nestle and stack and grow around the edge of the center, but not all of them are layered and stacked. And I often want to draw them pointy on the ends, but they're definitely rounded. They're not super pointy. 
Again, some of them are definitely bug eaten. And just tracing, so this one has some big bug bites out of the end there. But just tracing over the different shapes of the petals, again, it's that muscle memory from tracing so that when I sit down to start drawing it, then I have um, a lot more sense of it. I can really see where that blue sky is showing behind, right? So, but I'm not seeing that much of any of the other details in the background. So, let's see, this one. So I would start this one in the same way that I started the others with the circles and the placement of the circles. So we have this little sort of small oval here. I didn't draw around the... So this again is an oval around the outside. But this one's a little bit more round. It's just kind of an odd round. So let's see. Okay, this tool is super handy for this. So this just kind of helps me see where the petals are in regards to the center because the center in this one definitely is that bigger circle. So I have my s small oval here and notice that there's more distance from there to there than here to here. That center oval is not right in the center. And then this one over here is kind of going this way. And then we're going to have this again. We have a taller circle at the top than down here because of the foreshortening of perspective. And if I take the time to get those guidelines in, I'm going to get that shape a little closer to the truth. And now it becomes easy to have fun. <clears throat> Good morning, Yvonne. <clears throat> come in and add the flowers. I can also come in down here and we can get our big leaf in here and we have a leaf coming over here. I didn't plan that very well on the page, right? I didn't use the, the page great uh, unless I wanted to maybe come back in and add this dude over here as well, which we can do. Kind of fills up that page. And then with this one, I want to just go ahead and be a little more loose and sketchy. And so again, I'm just going to come in just very loosely kind of following those shapes. And it makes the flower look so funny. when we draw them. So the centers are very dark, right? The sun's very bright on those. These also have a lot of texture and lines. But when we see the shortness of these, it looks strange, right? It's not symmetrical to the eye. So then we're going to come in here. We're going to do that same thing, just bring all those petals around the edges. And I'm just using, again, the edge of my oval as my guideline there. Noticing where this one actually is sticks out beyond the edge of the oval a little bit more, and so does the next one. And then we have these kind of funny little skinny ones in there. And then our center here actually comes in behind. So I go back to my Zentangle practice of drawing behind.
and this one has sort of long spindly. Notice that these end up being a little more pointy than some of the other ones. Again, not going for any perfection. And there we have some simple sunflowers that we have the shape. They don't feel perfect. They feel perfectly imperfect but it's a start. It just feels like a start. And I also love the, the texture in these when you look at them up really close in the center. They're pretty magical. Let's see. If I scan through my photos you would just laugh at the ridiculousness of how many photos I have. But if when you look at the the center of the detail of that. Like this to me would be a spectacular painting to really just come in and get up close and personal and you can really see the, the texture in the leaves and the green behind. So don't be afraid to get up really close to things to see the detail. The far away is pretty as well but there's something about these close up ones like that one, I can even see the, the bug eyes on the grasshoppers, kind of creepy. Um, but, you know, he was enjoying the, the center. But so when you're taking pictures of things, get, a, this was a seed, some kind of dried seed pod. And just, come on, mm -mm -mm. getting up close so you can see the shape and texture of things. So next time you go out for a walk, these were, we'll, we'll do some leaf practice as well. And next time you go out for a walk, take lots of pictures of leaves or grass. I did pick a few leaves because I wanted to get some good pictures, but this one especially, like I love the, the texture. Some of them, the, the veins of the leaves are perfectly symmetrical on either side and some of them were not. So I learned so much just by sitting and looking at these different leaves. So part of learning to get better at drawing is simply a practice also in looking at things up close, right? Looking at things up close. And I can kind of just come in and start to even capture just a little bit of that you know, variation. I am not going to draw the grasshopper on there. And sometimes it's easier when there's shading and shadows. There was so much sunlight that um, it was actually tricky. So this was one way that I would do this if I were able to print photos. But if I weren't able to print photos, then I would just get some tracing paper and use some tracing paper to help me get started with some of the lines and the composition. I could trace the entire picture. Um, I also want to print some of these photographs on tissue paper and collage with them. So I have a, a few different ideas for things that I want to try. But you know, if this were the, the composition of this photo here, This would help me get that placement just a little bit better. I can still practice the drawing, the hand drawing. But tracing paper is a, is a great tool to have in your arsenal. This is like kids really inexpensive tracing paper from uh, the office supply store or maybe Michael's, I don't remember. You can get it anywhere. But this also can help me see the, the composition and the alignment of things, right? To see maybe a little bit better the, the placement. So if I were to put this over here, right? I didn't quite get that placement right, but it's not bad. 
And then I could do that same thing I did before and this allows me to come in and just um, use this as a better guide. So it's another great way to be able to come in and play with the flowers. Same thing with these two, right? If I really wanted to capture the, the shape and the, the placement of these flowers, and if I did it with permanent black ink, I could actually then collage with these, which would be really cool. So I could come in here where I talked about, you know, how am I sort of getting these designs down to create interesting shapes to maybe design a coloring page for myself. So if I come in and just get these down in a different way, then I really see the shapes of those petals. Again, I can go lay these over my own drawing and see how close I got to kind of getting those shapes down. And there we have our funky little hibiscus and our oops, pretty little Cosmo there. I love having tracing paper in my studio. I think it is a valuable tool for practice, for collage, for getting the shapes of things because then you can always use this to transfer a drawing to a journal or a canvas. Put some pencil on the background and create your own graphite or if you're working in a journal, you know, hold it up to a window. And then all of a sudden we have these very interesting drawings that these would be super fun to use in collage, right? And so I can have some fun with coming back in with all the, the lines of these flowers, giving them some texture. I might, if I were going to do that again, just take that shadow out. If I were doing just a black and white illustration, but again, we've all of a sudden we've got this nice, um, interesting flower design. So it's another great way to just really start to see the shapes of things and seeing the shapes of things. If you do buy or look at in the library, you know, beginning drawing books, um, they it's what they teach you is how to see the different shapes of things. But there's two different ways to get started. And this is so fun. And I'm like, now I want to go play with collage. But it gives us a couple of different ways to get started with getting some flowers on paper. I will be back tomorrow evening at 5 p.m. Mountain Time for an evening session of painting in your PJs. And we're going to paint a sunflower, draw and paint a sunflower. That's my plan and I'm sticking to it. So now I can really see a little bit better than when I drew it myself, the, the foreshortening of that. So I did okay, right? But also what I love about this is I can come lay this over here and my oval was too big. So I can see that's where I struggled was getting those bottom petals short enough. Right. So that was um, so the if I would have maybe started with the tracing paper, I might have figured that out a little bit better. But this is um, I think it's a good start for me. You know, again, notice like we drew what one, two, three, four, five, like six little mini drawings and then a couple of these on the tracing paper. And it took almost an hour. So I think just remembering to give ourselves this time for that, you know, playful practice is really, really important. So thank you for being here with me as always. Um, I'm Dr. Manette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs live with Manette. I'll be back tomorrow at 5 p.m. and Thursday at 7 a.m. And thanks for drawing along with me and uh, I'll see you guys all soon. Have a great rest of your day. Bye everybody.